Manga Wido. My name is Satoshi Noda. Today I'm attending a blind date for the first time in my life with an invitation from a friend. It's not like I don't have experience with women, but I'm not good at blind dates and have been avoiding them. However, my life has been all about work ever since I became a civil servant. I'd like to have a girlfriend soon. I can't afford to say no to blind dates anymore. I hope there's a good girl. Let's introduce ourselves! Satoshi first! Uh, um, I'm Satoshi Noda. Uh, um, nice to meet you all. Ah, I didn't know what to say and it turned out to be a disappointing self-introduction. The get together continued after that, but I remained nervous in a place I was unfamiliar with. You don't seem like you're used to blind dates, Noda-san. It's actually my first time at a blind date, too. It's nerve-wracking, isn't it? Y yeah, it is. The most beautiful woman among today's female members, Mayu Shinohara, approached me. After that, I enjoyed talking with Mayu-san as my friends looked at me with envy. Surprisingly, Mayu and I liked the same artists and had similar tastes in food, so we naturally hit it off. And I got Mayu's contact information on my first blind date! What luck! And after that, we went on several dates. Um, I know I'm like this, but please go out with me! Yes, I would love to! We became a couple at last! Her being cheerful and pure, I promised to cherish her for the rest of my life. She enjoyed using social media, so when we went out to eat or to a nice place, the first thing she would do was take photos and post them. She really likes social media. You should make an account too! I was not very good at that kind of thing, but Mayu recommended me and I decided to make an account. Make sure you follow me. You're actually the only person I could. Mayu posted pictures every day, so on the days I couldn't see her, I would look at her social media and comment. Then one day, I casually looked at Mayu's social media and saw a post of us at a restaurant where we went on a date the other night, as well as shots of me in my sleep. You couldn't see my entire face, but people who knew me could probably recognize. This was not a good thing under my circumstances at work. I should tell her when I see her today. Satoshi! Sorry to keep you waiting. Not at all! Uh, hey, before a date, I wanted to talk to you about something. Huh? What is it? You know how you posted my face on social media, like when I was sleeping? Oh yeah, that post had a good response. I gained a lot of followers and likes. I see, but it's embarrassing and I'd rather you not post my face. Huh? But that's because you don't take me on dates where I can get more social media worthy photos. What? Mayu had the scariest face I've ever seen. Did I say something that offensive? Look at this. Fine looking necklace glints on her chest. What is that? Someone I met the other day gave it to me as a gift. He's young, but he's the president of a company and very rich. He confessed his feelings for me, and I made him wait for a reply. But now that I think about it, he would make me happier than you. Let's break up. What? W wait a second. That's no reason to break up with someone. I tried to convince her to think it through, but Mayu... I don't want to be with someone who is picky with my hobbies, and you didn't even spend time with me for the past six months because of work. You don't even give me presents. Anyways, goodbye. No way. Thus, I was abandoned by Mayu in less than six months. It didn't end there. I looked at Mayu's social media and found an unbelievable post. She posted a picture to me that said, my ex was an abusive delinquent, and all kinds of things that were not true. What? What is this post? She even responded to comments expressing concern for her as if she was the victim. Mayu, unbelievable. I used to go to her profile to look at her photos because I still had feelings. But with this, my regrets for Mayu completely vanished and I became angry. Then one day, I found another outrageous post from Mayu. She had posted pictures of herself with a man in front of high-end diners and fancy cars, along with that necklace she had bragged about when we broke up. This is from that time! 
I looked at the Tad guy's profile and found that his name was Ryo Akagi. He was the president of a tech company who seemed to live a lavish lifestyle. All of the posts with Akagi were filled with a luxurious feel and received many likes and comments. So different from my last abuser, so happy! My anger was growing at Mayu for posting such things. But then one day, about half a month later, her boastful post came to an end. Apparently, Mayu had broken up with Akagi. I thought he was a prince, but he turned out to be a gambling maniac. Why am I so unlucky with men? Mayu posted a photo of herself tagging Akagi with his caption. Gambling maniac? While many comments encouraging Mayu flooded in response to that post, somebody added, Poor thing! I'm gonna hold a party for businessmen, lawyers, doctors, and other high-spec men. Would you like to come? It's limited to beautiful women only, and I'd love for you to come. I was surprised to see the name of the person who commented. Shuichi! It was my best friend, Shuichi. Shuichi was an elite salary man working for a major securities company. I called Shuichi in an instant. Not that woman! Huh? It's Mayu Shinohara! You left a comment, didn't you? Huh? You know her too? I told him about what happened with Mayu. If you go back through her post, you'll find a few with me in it too. That was close! I completely fell for it! I'm running parties on the side now! I use my contacts to organize parties for high-spec guys. So that's why he made that comment. I met Mayu on a blind date a few years ago. I remember she was a pretty girl. And recently I've been putting a lot of effort in attracting customers through social media. That's before I met her. She lied about never going to blind dates. Anyway, let's get her to apologize and delete her posts that are full of lies. At Shuichi's suggestion, we decided on a plan to get close to Mayu at the party and make her delete her posts. I wanted to sneak in on the night of the party, but unfortunately I was at work. Then I got a text from Shuichi, who said that Mayu was still lying to everyone there, saying things like, My ex was an abusive delinquent and I had a really tough time. In addition, she seemed to have said the usual line about never attending a blind date before. Shuichi tried to question her, but being constantly surrounded by men for her beauty, he couldn't get the chance. He was determined to hold another revenge party. Immediately after I closed the text from Shuichi, an incoming call from a certain number rang. Hello? Uh, yes. It's at the usual place, starting at 7 p.m. Yeah, I'll see you then. Two weeks later, my schedule allowed me to sneak into the revenge party hosted by Shuichi. I sat at a corner near the party table and listened in on the conversation so that Mayu wouldn't notice me. Shuichi, the host of the party, was also looking around the restaurant and approached Mayu, keeping an eye on her behavior. Mayu, as usual, lied about it being her first time at a blind date and started acting like a pure and innocent girl. How many firsts does she have? Eventually, her usual line came up. Most of my exes were jerks. The last one was a gambling maniac, and the one before that was an abusive delinquent. Huh. Juichi called me over, and I jumped out from the wall behind the box seats and said, I see. S satoshi why are you here? She turns to look at me in surprise, and I show her something. Doesn't matter, but you, you're under arrest. What? It was a police identification card. I'm a police officer. You probably didn't know because you dumped me right after we started dating. Writing lies on social media about others is a crime for defamation. Oh, wait a minute. So what? It's not like I'm causing any damage or causing anyone any trouble. Well, it may be fine for me, but someone else reported you for the damage. I gave a signal with my eyes and Akagi-san emerged from the back seat. Because of your lies on social media about me, my company's reputation is in the gutter. New employees who had already been offered jobs turned them down one after another, and the company's in big trouble. That's why I filed a damage report. <gasps> You two were in on it? I saw your post about Akagi-san being a gambling maniac and contacted him. I had a guess that he was also a victim of your lies. When Nota-san contacted me, it was the first time I found out about the terrible things written about me. 
I broke up with you right away because I thought you were a dangerous woman. I didn't think you were this crazy. Mayu, in a tight spot, burst into tears and began begging for forgiveness. <laughs> I'm sorry. I lied just so I can get some attention. I didn't think I'd become such a big deal. <laughs> Those tears are lies too, right? Apologizing isn't going to do any good when you've already been reported. Well, let's hear the details at the station. Mayu then left the restaurant with an officer who had been called to the scene. Good job! That's some fine police work right there! I guess so, but I need to improve my eye for people. I'll host as many parties as you want, so cheer up! I'll invite lots of cute girls! Thanks, but I think I'll hold off on those for a while. Later, Akagi-san told me that Mayu agreed to the 5 million yen offer and the settlement had been reached. I heard that Mayu's been working day and night with no days off to pay for it. In addition, both her close friends and parents cut ties with her because she kept pestering them to borrow money. She couldn't afford to buy clothes or beauty products, let alone spend time on social media, and now looks like a shadow of her former self. Who would have thought that a post on social media in the spur of the moment would pay such a price? I guess that's karma! Oh, I should have sued her for defamation too! I have to be careful not to fall for these kinds of women in the future. My name is Maho Kotani. From my parents, as well as their friends. Maho, you are so cute. In the future, you might become a model. Or perhaps an actress? Told me such things as I was growing up. Since kindergarten, if there was a play, I would always play the main character. In the club activities, if people had to choose a representative for them, I was always chosen for the role. If you look cute, that means there will be many people who will be jealous of you. Make sure that you have people on your side. My parents advised me with those words, so I made sure to be friendly to people around me. Thanks to their advice, my school teachers were always on my side. For example, if I got into an argument with a classmate, my teacher would always say, There is no way that Maho would be wrong about this. They always helped me out. At school, there was a clear division between my classmates who hated me and liked me. I think most of the boys were on my side. When I was in junior high, I got in an argument with a girl who didn't like me. Mo, could you take cleaning duty more seriously? You always ask the boys to do them for you and leave early. That's not fair. But they always say that they would do it for me. I'm not forcing the boys to do it. So what's wrong with it? If you have a job assigned to you, then you should be the one to do it, don't you think? You always leave others to do the preparation for PE and science classes. You've never done them yourself, not even once! Alright, alright. But that's because everyone says I will do them for you. Okay, I understand. You girls are jealous of me because nobody has ever said that for you, right? Yikes, that is sort of miserable. I think you should stop saying those things, you know? <laughs> uh, how dare you say such a thing! Stop it! Maho is special! Unlike you ugly bitches! Exactly! Cuteness is justice! Ugly bitches getting jealous is pretty miserable, you know? If you're that frustrated about it, try to become a beauty like Maho! The girls who started the argument with me left in tears. Because of this incident, my position in the class became invincible. In order to remain at the top of the cast, I studied hard and took care of my looks. When I had stress, I took it out on the ugly girls. Maho! Is it true that you took Natsuki's boyfriend? She was crying. You make it sound like I'm the bad one here. He said that he prefers me over her. You're lying. You approached him first. There were many people who saw you bringing him to the back of the school. That was to have the quick meaning about student union. He's also the one who said that he likes me. Why am I being the one to be accused? You made him say that, didn't you? You are really the worst. I see, so you want to know how much power I have, do you? Then... Ah, ouch! The hearts! Ah! Huh? What? I didn't do anything! What happened? Are you alright, Maho? This girl hit me hurts! What the hell are you doing? You're horrid! Wait, I didn't do anything! Maho just fell over by herself! The boys told the teacher about this, and the ugly girl was crying because the teacher scolded her. Well, that's what happens when one picks a fight with me. 
Serves them right. After that, I always played the part of a serious student in front of the teachers. Behind people's back, I dated many different guys. I fought back whenever the girls tried to attack me in some way. I was enjoying my school life. But there is one incident that almost got out of hand. When I was a university student, I spent a night with a good-looking guy. But it turned out he was already engaged to his girlfriend. <sighs> I didn't know that he was engaged with you. I didn't tell you that I was engaged, but I did tell you that we were together. You knew, but you slept with him, didn't you? You were such a devil! But he said that he had broken up with you, Maki. So I only believed what he told me. You're a liar! Many people saw you making a move at him. And people also saw you take him to the hotel after you got him drunk. I will not forgive you. I'm going to sue you. I did panic a little bit when she told me that. After all, a real lawyer actually came to my house. But my parents are wealthy people. The corporate attorney who works at my dad's company was so brilliant. He quickly got the other party to negotiate over the case. Maho, there won't be a second time. That's right. We can't keep on covering for you like this. I understand. Dad, Mom, I am really sorry. I was able to fool my parents with my submissive act. That was close. After graduating from university, I continued to do as I liked. I did learn my lessons, so I didn't try to take a guy from his girlfriend. But I did bully my junior coworkers if I didn't like them. I also made sure to become my boss's favorite and asked coworkers I didn't get along with to be transferred to other departments. I continued to play around with handsome guys who were my senior coworkers. If things became risky, I quit the company right away and continued to do the same in other companies. I'm good looking and smart. I also graduated from a well known university, so I never had trouble finding work at a different company. But when I turned 28, I started to think that I should change my ways. At an average company, one can only find average guys. That's right! If I work at a major company, everything will turn out well. I have been thinking that it was time for me to get married. I saw that one of the big companies had an opening for the secretarial position of the company's president. If I can make connections with the top person at an elite company, I can easily meet elite guys! I immediately applied for the position. If I write on my resume that I switch companies too many times, I won't be invited for the interview. So I'll just fix it up a little bit. Passed! That was easy. I was invited to their final recruiting stage for an interview. Well, that was a piece of cake. My beauty wins over them all. I did my makeup and left the house, brimming with confidence. I got to the train station near the company without any problems. I had just gotten out my smartphone to check the time. If I still had time, I thought I could enjoy a cup of tea before the interview. Ouch! The heart! Ouch! Hey, what do you think you're doing? A pregnant woman came colliding into me. Oh, I'm sorry. You're in my way! How miserable you look with your big stomach! Get out of my way! You were ugly, and on top of that, with your stomach bulging out like that, you look like an alien! Pregnant women are really disgusting! The pregnant woman fell down on her butt. But I ignored her and went to a cafe. After that, the time came for me to go to the job interview. I looked over at the other candidates while waiting. But they all seemed ugly and stupid. For sure, I'll be the one to be hired. I went into the room full of confidence. I'm Maho Kotani. It's a pleasure to meet you. I sat down, but I soon noticed from the look on the interviewer's faces that something was wrong. What is going on here? I'm surprised that you could come here with such a calm look on your face. Uh, I'm sorry? We will not hire you. I broke out in cold sweat with the interviewer's cold stares and the heavy atmosphere in the room. Not hired. Did this man say that? I haven't said anything yet except my name. What is he saying? Um, I'm sorry, but did you say that I will not be hired? Uh, could you tell me why? Our company's number one policy is trust. Even if it's a secretary, bad-mannered employees will ruin the trust that this company has built. We have been observing you today from the moment you left your house. Does that mean that you followed me? Yes, that's right. After you let the pregnant woman fall down, you apparently left her there alone. 
My colleague here says that she saw all of this happen. Yes, I did. A pregnant woman broke her water after that and was taken to the hospital in an ambulance. She said that she may report this incident to the police. I gave her my business card and told her that I would be willing to give her your contact information if there is to be a police investigation. <laughs> what? Well, no! That's not true! I did not let that pregnant woman fall! That was not me! She's lying! If that's the case, should we ask the train station if we can see what's on their surveillance cameras? Since it's injurious assault, if the pregnant woman reports this to the police, I think it will be possible to see what's going on in the surveillance cameras. There was nothing more to be said with such cold stares piercing me. My face was completely pale when I said excuse me and left the room. What? What? Why did they follow me? Why on earth would they do such a thing? That's stalking! That is messed up! The company is at its end! I will write this on my SNS and let the world know about this! I was absolutely furious when I was about to leave the building. Mo, the woman who had followed me called out to me. You haven't changed at all since the student days. You may look good on, on the outside, but inside you're still a piece of trash. What? Who are you to tell me such a thing? No, no. This can't be... That's right. I'm Maki. You slept with my boyfriend while we were both university students. Did not think I would be meeting you again like this. So, you did this to take revenge on me? You are the worst! No way. I don't have such free time on my hands. It was just a coincidence that I was assigned to follow you for this hiring process. If you had done nothing wrong, I would have told them so. You brought trouble onto yourself. Bye. Hey, wait! I lost my temper and control. The guard man took me down and I was taken away by the police. I was arrested for property damage and interfering with the public officers. On top of that, I was sued by the pregnant woman for causing an injurious assault. Dad! Mom, please help me! We told you there would not be a second time. You aren't part of our family anymore. Please leave. I was able to negotiate with the pregnant woman, but I used up all my savings and sold all the brand items I had to pay her for the consolation money. I was left penniless. My parents really drove me out of their house. I had no place to live. I ended up spending my time in a park or internet cafes. I also spent nights with the guys I met through a dating app. Why did things turn out like this? What did I do wrong? I also asked my former classmates for help, but no one helped me. Only one guy from my previous company said, You can come to my place. So I went there. Thought that I could finally sleep with a roof over my head. But that lasted only a brief moment. I was bullied, but couldn't escape. I was forced to sign the paper that made me his joint guarantor for money he borrowed. Then forced to work at a brothel. I somehow managed to escape and went to my parents' place to ask for help. But both my dad and mom were no longer there. The house was gone and the land was up for sale. My life was totally finished. Where did I go wrong? I was just having fun with my life. Please, can someone tell me how I should live from now on? My name is Toshia Hasegawa. My mother died in an accident when I was 10 years old. Ever since then, my sister, 7 years older, took care of me. My father, who loved her with all his heart, became a shell of a man after my mother's death, and the sales of his own business continued to decline. He was forced to close his stores a few years after my mother's death. My sister started working right out of high school to support my father and I. I'm going to work after I finish middle school! I can't let you work so hard all the time! No, you have to go to high school at least. I'll take care of the money. Don't worry. She asked the company for permission to double work so she could work on weekends as well. I did most of the housework. Dad saw us and gradually got back on his feet as he started doing the housework and got a day job. Thanks to him, I was able to enter public high school. The peaceful days did not last. Sis! Sis! I'm sorry I pushed you too hard. It's my fault. <laughs> She passed just as I got a job after graduating high school. It was from an illness. My father, who felt responsible for my sister's death, 
was also exhausted and died of a cardiac arrest. I was left completely alone by my teens. I don't want to live any longer. I'll live with my family in the afterlife. There were times I thought that way, but my sister bought all of this for me. When I look at the new suit, shoes, and ties my sister bought me, tears welled up in my eyes. I have to live for my sister. I have to live my life without shame. Fortunately, the people at work were very kind and sympathetic to my situation. I was given careful guidance in my work, and I began to feel a sense of fulfillment. By the time I turned 20, I had a positive outlook on life. At that time, a temporary worker named Naoko Sasaki came into the office. Sasaki-san somewhat resembled my older sister. Although Sasaki-san was prettier than my sister, she had a certain air about her. The way she spoke, her beautiful handwriting, she reminded me of my sister in small ways, and I noticed myself glancing at Sasaki-san frequently. Huh? What is it? No, it's just that our eyes met again. Oh, I'm sorry. It must not feel good. No, it's not like that. It just reminded me of my brother when he would ask me what I was doing with that look on his face. You have a younger brother, Sasaki-san? Yes, he's in high school now. He plays baseball and has a buzz, so his head is so jagged that he gets angry if you touch it. <laughs> That's very sweet. You never know what life will bring you. We became friends through this conversation. When I got up the courage to ask her out to lunch, she smiled and agreed. Sasaki-san always listens to what I have to say, nodding her head kindly. The ordinary conversations I had with Sasaki-san made me happy, and I felt fluffy in a way that I've never felt before. At the age of 22, I realized that this is what it means to fall in love with someone. Hey, Toshia! Sasaki-san said she doesn't have a boyfriend! Go ahead and confess your feelings, man! It, 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 it's not like I like her or anything! You're blushing! <laughs> You're too obvious! Come on, go for broke! You got this! I wouldn't want to go broke. She's a temporary worker. You might never have the chance again depending on her future contract. Well, you're right. Okay, I'll give it my best shot. That day, I was doing a final check on the documents with Sasaki-san. A coworker thoughtfully said, We'll be out first, and took everyone else out, making us alone. Now's the time! Um, Sasaki-san? Yes? Um, you don't have a boyfriend, do you? If, if, if you don't mind, please go out with me! I boldly put out my hand and waited for Sasaki-san's reply. Then... I'm glad. I like you too, Hasegawa-san. Really? Yes. I've always thought it would be nice if we could be a couple. The... then... It's just you and me now. Hasegawa-san? Could you give me your hand? Huh? I thought she was going to hold my hand, but to my surprise, Sasaki-san took my hand to her chest. Can you touch it? Don't tell me you want to do it right here and now! Wh wait this is the workplace. I mean, what's going on all of a sudden? Being nervous, I shook off the hand unconsciously. Sasaki-san, on the other hand, uh, oh turned her head down in silence. What is going on? I mean, what was that just now? Is she a promiscuous woman who is pretending to be pure and innocent? My heart was pounding. And then, we're about to close up. If you finish your work, please head out. We both jumped in surprise. We eventually left the office in silence after that. Well then. Thank you. And we parted awkwardly. After that, I couldn't ask her what that was all about, and we continued to have an awkward relationship. My colleague, who led everyone out that time, pried around asking me things like, it didn't go well? Other employees noticed her awkwardness and looked at us curiously from behind our backs as well. I'm pretty sure she gave me the okay when I confessed my feelings to her, but what was that afterwards? Although it's true that there are women who want to have sex as soon as you agree to go out, I didn't realize Sasaki-san was that type of woman. 
Despite my misgivings, I couldn't bring myself to dislike Sasaki-san. Because usually when she's at work, she's pretty, kind to everyone, and overall a very wonderful woman. As I was staring at Sasaki-san and gave out a sigh, my colleague smirked. Take care of this for me! And hand me a cardboard box. Take it to the warehouse! And while you're at it, check the supplies as well! Hey, Sasaki-san! Will you go with Hasegawa and help? Wait, hey! It's fine, it's fine! You better confess this time! Uh, so awkward. While we were working alone together in the warehouse, I glanced at Sasaki-san, who was looking down awkwardly, just like me. I heard that Sasaki-san renewed her contract, so we have to work together for at least another six months. I don't think I'll be able to handle this awkwardness. Then I made up my mind and spoke to her. Um, about the other day. Sasaki-san looked at me startled, and then the next moment. What? Wait, why are you crying? Oh no, don't cry. I'll apologize if I did something wrong. No, it's just, I did that the other day because I was so nervous and I'm really sorry for that. I thought you weren't gonna talk to me anymore. I actually... I was speechless when Sasaki-san told me. I have breast cancer and had my breast removed. Because of that, I was dumped by an ex-boyfriend a long time ago. When I confessed my feelings, Sasaki-san's mind flashed back to the memory of when she was dumped by her ex-boyfriend. She panicked and put my hands on her chest as she tried to ask me if I was okay with a woman like this. I'm really sorry I surprised you. I was so happy that you confessed to me. As she apologized repeatedly, I was reminded of a certain woman. It was my older sister who died of the disease at a young age. She too had breast cancer, just like Sasaki-san. That time, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't say a single thoughtful word to my sister who was in pain and suffering. If I'm going out with Sasaki-san, does that mean I had to go through that same feeling again? No. This time. This time! I like you, Sasaki-san. My feelings for you won't change despite your illness or anything else. I'll take care of you forever. Please, go out with me. Sasaki-san's eyes widen and tears stream down from her face. Thank you. <laughs> she broke down in tears. We hugged in the warehouse for a while as we returned to the office. My colleagues were clapping for us and they even took turns shaking my hand. I was embarrassed, but at the same time, I was truly happy to be working in such a nice environment. After that, we continued to date, and two years later, I proposed to her. At this point, I mentioned my sister again. I know I've compared you to my sister before, but the feeling I have for you is definitely love, and I only have these feelings for you. Sasaki-san was a little surprised. I'll live my life to the fullest, so that you won't have to be sad again. So support me. I'll do my best to support you too. With that, she agreed to my proposal. Sasaki-san. Now Ko's cancer had spread after that and she was hospitalized by her 40s. I was very impatient, just like with my sister, and I was angry. Why now, Oko? But I swore to support her until the end. We both battled with the disease and she entered the palliative care ward. Naoko passed away when she was a little over 50 years old. Near the end, she was able to see our daughter wearing a kimono for her coming of age ceremony. And she looked very peaceful and happy. Thank you. I'm so happy I got to spend time with you, Naoko. Me too. Thank you. I love you forever and ever. All the days I spent with you are my treasures. Beautiful day. It looks like mom is smiling. Yeah, I know. I'm sure she's watching over us. I saw you smile in the sky. Naoko, thank you for meeting me. I love you. Always have, and always will. My name is Koji Kinoshita. I love books since I was a child, and in my spare time, I used to spend all my time reading books in my father's office. By the time I was in elementary school, I started coming up with my own stories and writing them in notebooks. 
People around me called me a nerd, but I didn't care about what they said since I was consumed in the world of literature. My dream was to become a novelist. When I entered junior high school, I joined the literature club and started taking my writing to publishers and applied for newcomer awards. It's certainly a difficult world. I was unsuccessful in winning any awards, but some good things came from my efforts. When I entered a liberal arts college, I met friends who also wanted to become novelists. Furthermore, Koji, your novels are really interesting. Thanks, I'm glad. I become a fan. Will you let me continue reading? Yeah, of course. Rio, the most beautiful girl in the same grade, called out to me. Rio and other friends encouraged me and sometimes gave me advice as I continued to write. My parents were also very understanding. We'll give you financial support for three years after graduation. But you need to get a part-time job. You wouldn't want your body to turn dull. They said this to me when I was wondering whether I should get a job or continue pursuing my dream of becoming a novelist. My father also dreamt of becoming a writer when he was young. Blood is blood, I guess. If your father say so, go for it. I want to marry my future novelist. <laughs> yeah, I'll do my best to live up to everyone's expectations. I was dating Rio at the time and was also encouraged by her words. I chose to continue writing novels instead of getting a job. I continued to work part-time at a convenience store and spent the rest of my time in front of the computer. But... Another prize for effort. Why can't I win the grand prize? After two years, I still hadn't made my debut. I was feeling discouraged and my parents suggested I go outside for a change. It's true that I've been cooped up in my room lately. I did a suggestion and took a walk around town. But when I arrived in front of the station, I witnessed Rio walking arm in arm with another man. You're joking. Who the hell is that guy, Rio? Oh, Koji, I'm sorry. I actually decided to go out with him. Going out? So that means... I'm sorry, but we have to break up. I had high hopes that you would become a famous novelist, but you're not even close. I can't wait any longer. What? You can't just do that all of a sudden! He is an inspiring model. He's even been in magazines. I can't date a bottom feeder like you any longer. Break up with me if you want me to be happy. Bye! What? Uh, hey! I couldn't say anything more and watched dumbfounded as Rio pulled the man's arm and walked away. She's right. I'm just a part-time worker who dreams of becoming a novelist. All my classmates around me were working hard in companies. I bet that guy gets paid as a model, too. Compared to that, I'm just... My parents were worried about me when I came home with my shoulders slumped. But I couldn't bring myself to tell them what was going on, so I just shut myself away in my room. I was depressed for about a month after that. But my parents and friends started encouraging me, and I gradually regained my will. Can't go on like this! Around that time, an editor who had been helping me with my work approached me. Why don't you enter this contest with what you're writing right now? And gave me an offer. He approached you! You should give it a try! Yes, I'm sure your efforts will be rewarded. Go for it. Rio left me, but my parents were still supporting me. I can't let them down! I wrote frantically. And then, a year and a half later, I was at Rio's wedding. Rio decided to marry the model she had been dating, and she had the audacity to send me an invitation. I immediately told her I wouldn't be going. However... All my college friends are coming. It wouldn't feel right if you were the only one who didn't show up. So make sure you come. She was persistent, so I had no choice but to attend. Oh, I'm sorry. I made a poor convenience store worker pair congratulatory gift. If you want, I'll pay you back now. It was at that moment when Rio came toward me with a smirk on her face during the candlelight service. Rio, what are you talking about? Koji won the National Book Award! Don't you know? His books are selling really well and he's quite rich! Rio, you dumped Koji, right? Ugh, what a shame. What? My classmates, who knew about my experience with Rio, interrupted her. After Rio dumped me, I continued to write and I won the National Book Award for new writers last year. You can read it if you want. You can find it in bookstores. <laughs>
No way! Ryo's face turned pale. It felt good to see her face her own karma, and the karaoke I went to with my friends after the ceremony was great. But that wasn't the end of the story. After the ceremony, Ryo started pestering me to get back with her. Please! Let's get back together! What are you talking about? You have a model husband, don't you? He's just a magazine model and he's poor! You're much more attractive than he is now! Please, get back with me! That's cheating! Just stop! It's annoying! Ryo came to my house every day to ambush me and my parents were fed up with it. It was when I was just about to call the police. You! You're the one who's having an affair with my Rio! The moment I left my house to go to a meeting at a publishing company, I was tangled up with a man. Wait, is this? Looking closely, Rio's husband? Apparently, he followed Rio's trail and found out where I lived. That's not true! I'm the one who has to deal with Rio ambushing me every day! I took the initiative and told him what was going on. But there was something wrong. He froze as he looked at me. Wait, huh? Are you by any chance the same Kinoshita sensei who won the National Book Award last year? Yes. When I answered that, Ryo's husband, Rhea, stood there with his cheeks flushed. I can't believe it's you! I'm a fan of yours! What? Upon further conversation, contrary to his looks, he was an avid reader and even has read all the award-winning books at the bookstore. A respectable teacher like you would never have an affair. He bowed his head, convinced by himself. I'm sorry my wife has caused you trouble. She told a lot of lies and made you look bad even during our relationship. On top of that, she pressured you to get back together even though you just got married. I can't forgive her anymore. I'm divorcing her. I see. Well, I have emails from Rio requesting reconciliation and security camera footage from her screaming at her front door. Would you like to have that as evidence? Yes, by all means. As a result, Rio was divorced. Two months later, I lost everything because of you. She snapped and yelled at me. But when Rio saw the face of the person who came out of my house, she stood there with a blank stare. The person who came out was her ex-husband, Rhea. Rhea? What are you doing here? Don't tell me you guys are in on this together to set me up. Was it a trap to make me pay alimony? Why on earth would I do that? I'm Kinoshita-san's assistant now. You're bothering us, so please leave, or else I'll call the police. Yeah, I don't even know how this happened, but Rhea lives with me now. I used the money from my winnings and royalties to move my parents into a mansion in front of the station. They were getting tired of Rio's behavior, so I gave them an exit. Rhea just rolled in as I got the place to myself. I'm sorry about Rio. Let me make amends. He asked me on his knees, and I decided to hire him as a live-in part-timer for his passionate attitude and enthusiasm for my novels. Now I pay his salary in exchange for help gathering materials, cooking, cleaning, and other chores. What's up with that? Two of you living together? Ill. Gross. Rio seemed to have misunderstood our relationship and left in disgust. After that, she never came back again. Two years later, the third book from my debut was to be dramatized, albeit as a Saturday afternoon one-shot. I suggested Rhea, who at the time was working part-time in my house while modeling and acting, to be the main cast member. Are you sure you want me to play the main role in your work? You're the one who understands my work the best. In fact, this main character is someone I wrote with you in mind. You'll do fine if you play it naturally. Thank you! I'll do my best! With this drama, Rhea gradually gained exposure and was seen more often on TV. He has enough money to live without staying at my place, but I don't mind. For some reason, he still lives in my house. Well, he cooks what I like every day, listens to me complain about work, and is a good advisor, so I don't mind at all. Oh yeah, and Rio? I heard from a classmate that she got involved with up-and-coming musicians and cartoonists who took all her savings and lives a hard life now. 
I saw her cries on social media saying things like, Introduce me to a high paying job! And let me live in someone's house! She could have had a modest, peaceful life with Rhea had she not tried to get back with me. That's karma. Sensei, breakfast is ready! Thanks. Your food is always delicious and a source for my motivation. Makes me happy to know that my meals feed your work. At first, I was a little upset about moving in with them by chance, but I guess it's not so bad. All right, time to get working on my writing. My name is Ryosuke Noda, 17 years old. I started going astray around the time I entered middle school, and I turned out like this now that I'm in high school. There were many causes. Things like coming from a single mother, and my relationship with my older brother Shunichi, who's eight years older than me. Hey, that's enough! You caused trouble for everyone. I wasn't gonna talk back. It's true that I was a jerk, and there's no way I could win an argument against my brother in the first place. Every time I got into trouble, my brother would scold me. Hey, Ryosuke! Don't you feel sorry for your mother who works all day and night? It's okay, Shunichi. It's mom's fault for making him lonely. Besides, Ryosuke will be all right. Ryosuke will be all right. That's what my mother often says, but it was originally a saying from a welfare commissioner. I don't really know what a welfare commissioner is, but they're supposed to consult for local residents. Every time my mother had a problem, she relied on Shibata-san, a welfare commissioner. She cared a lot about us since we didn't have a father. It's okay if you're a little bit naughty. Ryosuke will be all right. You'll turn out to be a good, honest man in time. Despite her words, I was on the path to become a delinquent. Hey, listen to me, you little punk! My reputation is going down because of you! Oshima, the young gymnastics teacher in my homeroom, started cursing me. This always happens when the two of us are in the student guidance office. It seems that he just had enough today, and Oshima was harsher than usual. You're so different from your brother! You must have been made out of the leftovers from your brother and other useless cells! Huh? Why are you talking about my brother here? He's got nothing to do with this! Ashima's about the same age as my brother, so I was as repulsive to him as I was to my brother. These meetings are useless. A small fish like you has no future. No matter what that scumbag Oshima said to me, I didn't give a care in the world. The only people I have a hard time being scolded by are my mom and Ani Shibata. Oh yeah, I wonder how Ani Shibata is doing. I haven't seen her this year yet. On my way home, just as I was thinking about that, my phone rang. It was from my brother. As I rushed to the hospital, my brother emerged from the hospital room and beckoned me over. Auntie! Seeing me rush in, Auntie Shibata's eyes opened wide. You're making a lot of noise. Be quiet in the hospital. You who never grow up. The way she said it brokenly was painful. Auntie Shibata had lost most of her weight. I haven't seen you for a while, so I had a feeling, but you're actually dying. You still have a bad mouth, don't you, Ryosuke? By the looks of it, even I can tell that she didn't have long. I was told later that she had been diagnosed with cancer about a year ago and had retired from being a welfare commissioner for that reason. But just when I thought of wanting to see you, you came right away. Auntie's glad. I'm here because my brother called me in. I hid my emotions from her, but it felt surreal to think Auntie Shibata was going to die like this. I didn't even want to think about it. Ryosuke, you really gave me a hard time in the past. I scolded you more than my own children. Huh, is that right? My bad. Well, well, so you did feel bad. Then maybe I'll take something from you as an apology. You're so brazen. Say it. I'll give you anything you want, but I don't have a lot of money, so make sure it's not too much. Auntie took a breath and stared into my eyes. Ryosuke's foul mouth, his roughness, his stubbornness. Huh? His big ego, his pretentiousness, his lack of honesty. Uh, even a fool like me could understand what Auntie meant. It was her last will. I'm going to take all your bad traits with me. So it's time for you to start being a decent human being. What? 
Auntie, you trying to be dead tomorrow or what? Understood. It's a promise. Okay? I kneeled by the bedside. Auntie held my hand firmly. Oh, Ryosuke will be all right. You will become someone honorable who can help others. Me? I'm going to be someone who helps others? Yes. I'm counting on you. Auntie will be watching from the other side. On the way home from the hospital, I cried in an empty park. My brother didn't say anything and waited a short distance away, then silently walked me home. It was that weekend. Auntie passed away while being looked over by her family. I was considered by everyone around me to be severely apathetic from then until the day of graduation. Of course, Oshima's attitude towards me didn't change until the very end. It's too late to be gentle now! You're useless in society! It's pointless! I didn't care. How can I live up to Auntie's expectations? That's all I could think about. I graduated from high school and I applied to college. But there was no way I was getting in. I took a year off and enrolled in a prep school. I dyed my hair back, changed my clothes and attitude, and spent all my time studying and working part-time. Our family was just getting by financially. Of course, I had to manage the tuition by myself. If my brother can do it, there's no reason I can't. I'll be alright. Right, auntie? The relationship between my brother was also starting to change a little bit. Hey, bro. Can I talk to you for a second? I'm stuck on this math problem. Yeah, go wait in your room. I'll be right there. I'm sure my brother got some lasting words from Auntie Shibata as well. In fact, my brother was kindly helping my efforts to change. Change? That's great. Talk to me about anything. I'll support you. We're brothers after all. At the time, he was running a small recycling company. The company had a lot of trouble when it first started up, but now it seems to be doing well. As for me, after one year of prep school, I successfully passed the college entrance exam. At university, I chose social and environmental studies. I decided to study social environment broadly. I recruited a group of friends and actively participated in volunteer activities. It was also around this time that I began to feel more familiar with the problems faced by single mothers and poor families like ours. After graduating from college, I took a job at a company that works to reduce food loss something I've had a connection with since I was a student. Food being thrown away. Food loss was an issue that was occurring every day in Japan. In my current company, we were engaged into the direct sale of these foods to stores and consumers. I wanted to help mothers, children, and poor families as much as I could by introducing them to cheap groceries and meals. The company was busy, but it was the most fulfilling days of my life so far. It was as if the days of causing trouble for my family and everyone around me never happened. You're a piece of garbage. Just having one little fish like you is enough to be a big nuisance. When I think back to the past, I can't help but recall Oshima's face as well. Now I'm thankful for his scorn. To be honest, I made it this far partly on the strength of my anger towards him. And then one day, a few years later, I was in charge of interviewing, and an unexpected man showed up at my doorstep. My name is Ichiro Oshima. Thank you for your time today. Yes, it was Oshima. It's you after all. Looking at his resume, Oshima seemed to quit his job as a teacher and move from job to job, working in wholesale, printing, and security. I didn't say it out loud, but it seemed that he finally noticed me, and his complexion was getting paler by the minute. Oshima Sensei, it's been a while. I'm the little fish from back then. Thank you very much for your guidance back then. You, you're, no. Nodakun, aren't you? W why are you? Why not? I've been working at this company for a long time. You quit your job as a teacher? W well, how should I put it? Oshima quit teaching voluntarily. Huh? Why did you quit? I was told there were problems with my teaching and then I was too outspoken. It became hard to continue. That's understandable. It's a wonder they didn't see it as a problem when I was a student. Then I tried working here and there, but you know, it just didn't last. Oshima, who had been talking quietly, suddenly turned over while sitting down and scratched his head vigorously. Damn it! Damn, damn, damn it! You brothers for crying out loud! Oh yeah, my brother told me about you. Teacher, I hear you were classmates with my brother. 
It was a surprising fact that came out after my brother and I got closer. Yes, my brother and Oshima were classmates in college. According to my brother, Oshima looked down on him a lot because of our family background, but his grades were higher than his. And after graduation, he even started his own company, albeit a small one. Shima was taking out his resentment at me for not being able to compete with him in terms of intelligence and social status. He was a terrible teacher. But now that I think about it, he's just a very pathetic man. And I can understand his jealousy and hatred towards someone who's better than him. If I want to be helpful for society at large, I have to reach out to guys like this. As an interviewer, I made my decision. Alright, I understand. We will hire you. Oh? Huh? However, not at our company. I'd like to transfer you to our subcontractor. We're always short of staff over there. Is that okay with you? Oh, uh, thank you. The company I sent Oshima to was one of the companies my brother ran. It's a company that handles the disposal of industrial waste. Even garbage can become a resource depending on how it's utilized. Let him learn from that. That's what I intended when I introduced him to this job. But unfortunately, Oshima ended up quitting after working there half a year. What happened to Oshima after that, I only know through rumors. I heard he went back to the countryside in the cold Tokoku region and worked as a day laborer at a civil engineering company. Even a guy like him can find a way up from there if he faces his own inadequacies and changes himself. Like I did once. Right, Auntie Shibata? My name is Chika Suzuhara. I'm a housewife now. Because of my husband's job transfer, we moved to this town a few months ago. I finished setting up the furniture after trying out several different layouts, and I'm getting used to living in the new house. I've become more familiar with this town after going around on my bicycle on my daily errands. I thought that I'd like to do some part-time work since I had some extra time in the afternoons. Is it all right if I work part-time while you're working? Yeah, of course, but don't work too hard. Thanks, I'll look for a job then. When I was going around on my bicycle, I noticed that there were many elementary school students around here. It seems that there were many elementary schools and kindergartens, as well as nurseries in this area. Right, then maybe that facility is also in this area. Just as soon as I thought that, I searched it on the internet right away. Yes, it's here. I'll apply for this. What I was interested in was a facility that offered an after-school program. At this facility, children with physical or mental disabilities receive support and they can learn social skills by spending time with other children. Actually, when I was single, I used to work part-time at a support facility in another town. Many children with developmental disabilities tend to take extreme actions or to have unique perceptions of things. There are apparently many adults who find this difficult, but I enjoy thinking about things like, what kind of characteristics does this child have? Or how can I communicate better with this child? I found it very rewarding when the child I was interacting with broke into a smile. I applied to a facility with the after-school program close to my house. I was quickly invited for an interview and was hired right away. My husband works from afternoon to late in the evening, so my work hours worked out perfectly for taking care of children after school. When I started working there, I think I'm pretty good at this job. Oh, I lost. Kotaro, you've gotten really good at playing Othello. I didn't want to lose to you, Miss Chica, so I practice with my grandpa at home. Is that right? You're such a hard worker. Yep. At first, the children seemed to be a little wary of me. But when I thought of things from the children's perspectives and threw myself into playing with them, they began to open up to me. Chica, you seem to be really good spirits lately. <laughs> Did you notice? The work is hard, but I find it rewarding and fun. I see, but don't overwork yourself, okay? You have a strong sense of justice, so you tend to bear too much responsibility on your shoulders sometimes. So take it easy. It's part-time work after all. Okay, okay, I know. I started to work at the facility five times a week with my husband's support. Fortunately, all the staffs who I work with are nice people. But since it's work, not everything is rosy. You aren't able to manage your schedule. You're late in coming to pick up my child. I told you to be on time last time, didn't I? I am so sorry. I would like you to support my child with more care. Makoto says that he's often left alone. I'm sorry, Makoto sometimes gets into a panic when he's with many other people. When that happens, he takes some time off to cool down by himself. 
You make it sound like it's for a good reason, but aren't you just leaving him alone without taking care of him? <sighs> I don't really like it when I hear such excuses. There were quite a number of complaints from the faculty members. Parents want what's best for their children, so I thought it would be good to report all of what they say in order to improve the situation. I wrote down all the complaints we received, since that was the company's policy, and summarized them in my daily reports. Most of my coworkers took this seriously, and we made time to talk over the issues in order to make things better. But there was a person who said, just forget about the complaints. This was my boss, Kano, who was responsible for this facility. Don't bother with the complaints every single time! They aren't worth thinking about! But for the children, they are important matters. If the head office misunderstands that things aren't going well here, I'll be in trouble since I'm responsible for this place. You understand? There's so many care facilities for children around here, so it's very competitive. The head office is always on edge about it. You don't need to report every little complaint. Um... It is true that because there were so many competitors in this area, there were other facilities who went out of business. Yes, yes, everything is fine here. The headquarters managed multiple facilities for after-school programs, and their stance was that a facility that receives many complaints needs to be re-inspected. When that happens, the one to get fired right away would be Kano. In order to protect himself, Kano would say, don't report the complaints. Delete. What? Kano continued to delete the complaints we reported time after time and refused to let the headquarters know about them. However hard the part-timers worked, if the headquarters didn't know what was going on in the facilities, they wouldn't be able to make the right decisions. For example, they wouldn't know that the facility needed to increase the number in staff or more experienced ones. The program would not be run smoothly. And just as we thought, the number of complaints increased. The children also began to look more and more bored. What do you mean you can't look after my child? You used to look after him before on Tuesday and Wednesdays. I'm sorry, the staff quit suddenly and we don't have enough people. I am sick of hearing your excuses. It's fine, I won't ask you to look after my child. I'll look somewhere else. Things were really starting to get out of hand. I decided to go to Kano and have a talk with him one more time. Mr. Kano, please increase our staff numbers. Also, we would like to get more in touch with the schools. We don't know how the children are spending their days without having connections to their schools. You are so annoying. Don't tell me what to do! You're just a part-timer! You don't know your place! But there are so many complaints from the parents. I told you! You don't need to tell the headquarters about every little complaint! You part-timers just need to do what I tell you to do! That's not possible. It's not good for the children, and it's against our work ethics. You want me to get fired? We don't need such trifle complaints! We just need to select some of them and report them. Understood? Kano was furious, but this facility wasn't made for him. It was for the children and their parents. I also want to do something about the part-timers quitting one by one. I wrote an email to the headquarters to report the complaints we received when Kano wasn't looking. But when I was answering the phone from the parents, Kano discovered the email. What are you doing behind my back? The mail got deleted by the infuriated Kano. All right, that's enough! You bring nothing but trouble! Your contract was to be until next month, but I am not renewing it! I'll tell the headquarters that you're selfish and your behavior is intolerable! I'll also let them know that those are my reasons for terminating your contract! The other part-timers were in shock. I thought of talking back at him, but just then, I remembered my husband's words. You're a part-timer, so don't bear too much responsibility on your shoulders. Don't overwork yourself. Those words helped me to cool down. That's right, the children are important, but I'm just a part-timer. There's no reason for me to fight with this over my boss and get mentally drained. I see, I understand. Thank you very much. I accepted the dismissal and quit the job at the end of that month. To be honest, when I thought of the children who had come to like me, I felt very sad. But with Kano working here, this workplace will probably not improve however hard I may try to do something about it. Two weeks after I quit work, I was thinking to myself, it's incredible how much free time I have when I'm not working, as I was walking down the street carrying a bag of groceries. 
Then, a boy came up to me and spoke to me. Oh, Miss Chica, are you no longer going to be a teacher? It was Makoto from the after school program. We had gotten along well together. Hey, let's play together again. When are you coming next time? Or are you working at another after school program? Uh, no, not yet. Oh, right. If I work at another program, I could meet you guys again. When I got home, I searched for another after school program and applied for the position. I was hired right away and was asked to start working from next Monday. This program had enough staff members. It was also good because the well being of the children was their utmost priority. I felt comfortable working here. Then, after about two months into my new job, strange things began to happen. Miss Chica! Long time no see! Children from my previous workplace began to come here, one by one. Apparently, the word has been going around among us parents that you started working here. Chica, the children really enjoy being with you. Oh, is that right? I thought it sounded too good to be true, but according to one of the parents, the children were coming because they wanted to be in the program where I was working. Is it all right to be so happy? Then, I also heard something else that made me even more surprised. Apparently, my old workplace was in a pretty bad condition. They don't think about the children. There's not enough staff members. They can't coordinate their schedules effectively. Because of such bad reputation, many children switched over to different after-school programs, and the place could no longer keep itself up and running. See? That's what happens when you pretend like complaints never existed. I was thinking, I told you so, and that was when I got a phone call. Please, come back to work for us. The caller was Kano. Many children started quitting our program because they found out you were no longer working with us. After you quit, the other part-timers started to quit as well, and there aren't enough people. Please, Mrs. Zahara, come work for us again. I decline your offer. I am enjoying my work at another school program now. I don't plan to work under someone who deletes the complaints to save his own skin. Goodbye. I'm sure it's not really about me. It's the result of having deleted all those complaints. They got themselves into a negative spiral. In such a highly competitive area, this was the natural outcome for not answering the customer's needs. From what I heard after that phone call, the parents started to say that a bunch of children quit this program. On the internet, there were comments about, maybe the staff did something to the children so they all quit. In the end, there were even some unfounded rumors about the children getting abused, so the place was forced to close down. As for Kano, a female college student accused him of sexual harassment. You're fired! What? He was apparently fired. Kano was a contract worker, so maybe he couldn't find his next work. I once saw him looking pale in front of the Public Employment Security Office. That's what happens when you're only thinking about saving yourself. I'm having fun working at my new job place. I'm glad you're enjoying your part-time work, but don't forget to spend time with me as well. Sorry, let's go out on a picnic next Sunday. Oh, great! It's a promise! My relationship with my husband is good. I hope we'll continue to enjoy living in this town.